It's been such a long time hearing that opening. Actually, I kind of like a lot of the songs from that series. The openings, the endings, and the anime series itself. You know, I actually enjoyed it a lot. Really. Um, It was one of the very few reviews i ever done with. And the manga itself, I really and really enjoyed. And looking back, I still do like it a lot as much as I did back then. Maybe I did fanboy a lot of it, but then again, I really don't fanboy too much out of that or anything else. Granted, I have a little, you know, everybody have that experience once in a while. But in this case, I felt like it was justified. If that sounds a little weird because it sounds biased, but whatever. But in this case, I'm actually really happy to see it to come back. But before we start with that, we have to address one thing. This is episode 27 of Sparta's World Podcast. And I know I didn't do the podcast last week, but I was really out of place, out of shape, out of mind. It was just exhausting. And, you know, I, I, I overkill myself with this whole entire Naruto guide. And I had to make a comeback. I had to catch up. And I had to report this whole thing, review it, each of them, and the overall thoughts. Which I have posted in my YouTube page, so you free feel free to check it out. It's a little long. It's thirty minutes, a little above thirty minutes, but you know, I started off with the introduction of my expectation and what I've come from from the Naruto series itself, and then it gets to the review of the series. But if you haven't check it out, uh, if you haven't hear it, do check it out if you would like. It's um, you know, this. This is what it is. Um, you know, I have a lot of uh, people t- telling me it was really good. And, you know, I thank for the, for that. I th- I, I'm i open for any comment that you write in there or anywhere else, even like Tumblr. And, you know, it was nice to see some thoughts and some comments from you guys. So, yeah, do check it out if you like. Um, anyway, so with this one... Um, there's not much to say for news-wise. Uh, probably there was, but it's kind of too late. Let alone this one is actually too late to talk about. But I do want to address it because I do feel a bit, I do feel happy about it. And that's what has to do with D. Grayman or Die Grayman. Um, I'm not sure how you guys say it, but maybe I'll probably say Die Grayman. That sounds cooler. But yes, that series that's been a hiatus. For almost two years, is finally making a return in Jump Square Crown. Well, sort of. <laughs> okay, it's coming back. This the 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 same mangaka, the you know basically the same illustration and story. This one, however, is going to be a a new story to the the Diagramon. Let me say saying that for now. To this is a new story. Not sure how connected it will be. Not sure if it relates to it or anything about it. But the fact that it is taking place in that universe and the fact that it's the same manga called doing the story and illustration, it tells me one thing. It's coming back. The original series is coming back. From what I see. I like to think that this one shot or whatever, how many it will be, this new story is a way to see how the audience react and see if the audience do care about this series. Because I remember it happened before with the volume, when the volume took a long time to release. And whenever it was released, it, a lot of people really still bought the volumes. They, it, you know, it sold so well for what it is and you know it was it was nice that how much fans are dedicated to that series because legitimately the series is really good it's really good to me um i know there was problems in the later in the later of in the later series because that's where the couple of things one it became monthly now there's nothing wrong with that but you know it's harder for a lot of people who's already adjusted to the whole weekly base and then it went to the monthly. It's like, man, this waiting is taking forever. And not only that, some of the monthly chapter felt like a weekly chapter. As in, it become like only 20 pages. It's, it's mind-blowing. Now, here's the other reason why it might be the case. The mangaka had a bad illness. 
and it, it relates to her hand, I believe. She, I believe the illness is relates to the hand. Like she can't really move. She can't really um, you know, she really doesn't have that much of a controlled will. It's it sounds very frightening, and it is. But you know the the fact that she had that health issue for a while is is um you know it, it's best to leave the manga alone for the time being. If not, just drop it all together and just you know take care of that health health issue because it, it, like like any like anything in the world, your health means more than anything else. So in the that said, with that said, the, when you look at the series later on. You could tell the art wasn't as refined or as in or very. Is it was hard to read? It was hard to understand what was the situation going. Mainly the arc with Kanda being the main focus, dealing with his brother. Or yeah, I believe that was the case. You know, the art was so hard to understand what was going on. The fighting action was hard to understand. I got it when I read it again over and over, but. A lot of people didn't get it. I didn't get it the first time. I had to read it again. I had to read, reread everything and understand what was going on. The art was suffering. Um, the fact that some of the chapter was getting shorter and shorter, and then you know it was it was just it was getting messy. I don't know how the volume version are. I remember the last volume. They she managed to refine a lot of things. She managed to clean up a lot of mess. And it looks really nice. And I was happy for that. And then she went to the long hiders. And, you know, at first I was upset because, you know, the series, I still like the series as much as I did back then. And hearing the hiatus and then you never see a return for over almost two years. But on the other hand, you know, at least she's taking care of her health issues and all that stuff. So that was more, um, more priority, which is very understandable. It was just sad that the series... You know, we a lot of people really like this series. I like this series too. So, you know, it, the like the latest arc. You know, it, it was actually in art wise, it was much better than the last one, the second last one. But you know, the whole when it's gonna come out the chapter release, it always keep changing. Like it's gonna come out next month, or not? Not mine. It's coming out another month, then the other month. It just kills us the waiting. And you know it was at that point. Maybe you should just take a break because you're you're pushing it. And really, it's best to take a break and don't even try to go for it because it's just I I I I could try to see either the schedule were killing her, or the fact that she really um uh, persistent to really get the job done, which I admired that. But again, health you gotta take care of that. So you know I. I for for I know I probably don't know the true story behind that, but I just do know that she did have a health issue. I do know that their her work became monthly because of the health issue. I do know that there are many times the art suffers from it, which is a shame because her art can be really good when she takes the time and and actually get one hundred percent of her of her will. So that said. Seeing now that the manga is coming back, the series itself, the universe itself, is finally coming back to the surface after almost two years, as they say. Maybe it is almost two years, or maybe it is more than two years. I don't know. But point is, is back. It's a new story for now. But the idea is, to me, I see it as a test to test to see the dedication, to test to see if anyone is still interested in. D. Grayman, uh, whatever you want to call it. it is, I, I'm going to find out which is the best way to call it. But yes, they find out, to me, this is a test to see how many people are still interested in the series or how many newcomers would like to know this series. And I hope it delivers well. And to me, I still believe that the series is going to come back very, sooner than later. And with this with this new story, whatever is related to the series, to the main series or not, is already a big sign that it's coming back full force. So really happy to see that happening. And just is amazing that this month, July, is getting back two series. One want to make a new series that is Dragon Ball Super. The other wants to resume it, but first it wants to show you a new story on the universe of the the gray man so 
two returning series. Different ways, but it's returning. And I cannot be more happier than now. Regardless, this chapter is longer than the usual chapters we've been getting. This was a decent one. Um, not much really happened besides the stuff we get in the beginning. It's all fan service. Granted, we learned the location of Laxus and her and his teammates, but you know, everything else is all done for fan service and just for little comedy's sake. And then the rest is really about Brandis showing her power or the fact that how powerful these. Um, uh, Alvarez Kingdom are really are so not much to say in this chapter. It's just straightforward as it is, and um, you know, if you don't got, I can see where a lot of people don't like this part of the chapter, mainly from the beginning, probably because the whole fan service. I guess it's like um, I guess it's something that we we've been used to this series for such a long time. And granted, it's been I can't say it's been a while. We do get some fan service here and there in the recent chapters, and so. But I guess this one is all the hot spring and, you know, all the almost close to full nudity from these characters, mainly the women, especially with all where there's like what I think five women and the other two and the other one are guys like just two guys and one guy just happened to be Ichiya and, you know, it's just a nightmare with him coming along. But needless to say, this beginning part mainly like i believe like a good six or seven pages just done for fan service and then everything else is really the main part with the whole showcase the power of the 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 brandish and you know pretty much give you the idea that these other mages the 12 mages they have the one they hype it up from the councils are pretty pretty much are no joke and they're just damn powerful so, with that said, I really hope they keep it this way. And I really, 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 really hope they manage to not to derail this kind of hype. It's kind of scary to do this kind of tactic. Especially in this far, you know, this, this, um, especially in this kind of situation. Because, you know, we've been, we've been told that these guys are no joke. There's, there's like over 500 guilds in total. And they could take on, they could try to take on Ishiga. The Ishig Ishigar continent, so you know we gotta keep it. We gotta keep it like that. But anyway, uh, from the beginning, um, I can see where people a lot of could get annoyed with Juvia. You know, it almost feels like okay. It, I know not a lot of people would read, would read One Piece, One Piece, but in One Piece we have this guy Sanji. He hasn't met a girl in over two years, I believe. And because of the day when he finally come back from the training, seeing a girl is like a ma- most amazing thing in the world. So what I'm saying is for Juvia, it's a different situation than that. But it's more, rather than not seeing Gray for so long, but more like just, I don't know, I guess the obsession got the got more out of hand for her. Or the fact that maybe she's just like that and we're just seeing more of a the same same running joke of being like, you know, her wanted to do this and that. In this case, she 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 doesn't care about being naked in front of him, but it be care about being naked in front of the other girls, like it's no big deal, or something like the more of the ending part with Juvia. You know, rather have somebody come into um, you know, feel her, and I do mean that way, physically contact. It's rather strange, but I can see where a lot of people could get upset about this kind of trope. I don't really take it that much serious, so I really don't really care that much because the character of hers is mainly a joke style, and if we were to take her serious, it would be a huge problem. Thankfully, that's not the case. I could still see you. I could still see why you would not like her, and I won't even blame you guys. But you know, I'm just saying like it could have been much worse. Especially the status is just a side character and all that stuff. Still, still, you know, questionable. No doubt about it. You could hate her for all I care. I can understand that. Anyway, the main part of with this whole thing that come out of it, besides his multiple fan service, is the whole fact that Laxus and his team is actually in the 
nearby. It's actually with um, the Blue Pegasus. That's why Ishii shows up and pretty much explain what they've been doing so far. And Laxus again still be hold on. I guess you could say being being held from hype to see what how much progress he has be he has done. And you know, Gajo he got pissed off because he he was supposed to keep it surprised, but Ishii just keeps spoiling like it was just like oh yeah he's there 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 it is stuff like that. And then you know they uh, he got knocked away all the way to Levy. Go figure, landed right on her. Um, yeah, this like those in your windows things, but yeah, you get the idea where this is thing going. But anyway, the mainly basically Laxus is there. They're well, more or less there. They're there, so they they're at least they're close to they're close enough to get to them to reunite once again. Now going back to the whole. Brand is showing up and Nasu and Gray are like you know feeling a little bit scared because the power because the fact her she, she they felt the pop the magic in her she felt uh, they felt like they're about to go against something that's just way too powerful excuse me and then and you know she came there to get some food uh, I believe the mon- the, the that's that mango thing mango the one that we saw from the last chapter. But because of that place got destroyed by Marin, uh, yeah, even though he said it's not so and Gray, which is kind of funny, the fact that they're gone, you know, she was upset to the point she's going home. So pretty much she barged in there for no, for just to get food, rather than barge in there to stop a spy or whatever, any intruders. And then when, when Marin's like, um, you're supposed to find, you're supposed to, you're supposed to get these, um, He's supposed to get these intruders. We're supposed to take them out, and he's like, "I don't care." And then she tells him to take um take the prisoner out of the uh out of her his safe place. I forgot what they call it, his um collection or whatever the hell it goes. And you know he he's like, "Well, I'm, he's like, why would I do that?" Then that's where she showcased her power, and she pretty much moved the entire island. Is it's rather insane to do that? She pretty much uh shift the entire island to whatever her liking. And then Martin was agreed to actually change his mind and bring back Urza and Lucy. So, once again, it's pretty much showing case uh, a bit of a magic. So, this is where we really get into the higher level of this whole, you know, this whole uh, series. Not the highest like Zeroth and, you know, Arkanugia, but still. So basically, Brandish is a character that doesn't really care about anything as long as it doesn't interest her. Like if she, if if like she really takes it to another level of that, to the point that when Nasu got mad because you know they of course they attacked them and they want to pay back, especially what they did to um Mess. So they was like you know they don't want to they they're not gonna let that slide. And then Brandish is like, oh okay, fine. Look, I'll take on Marin. Boom. Okay, now we're even. So. Yeah, she take another level to do that in order to get everything settled. She really doesn't give a crap, so um, and so that's how that's how she rolls. Then pretty much uh, she's telling them that like, you know Markov is alive, but it's best to you guys to go back home or whatever and don't even come near because they don't because who knows Markov will stay alive. Then like, once again. To showcase her power, but not only just not only to shift the island, but this time disappeared, uh, made her disappear pretty much, and everybody has to swim their life, which is pretty messed up for the sake of the villagers because I don't even know. I mean, I'm pretty sure they won't go to that much of a detail to show the villagers, the people, the tourists, whatever, the people in there, you know, swim and try to make it out alive and stuff like that. I don't think we're gonna get that much in depth. I'll be surprised they do that. Be like, oh, we're gonna see some people that are like drowning or whatever like that. But yeah, pretty much. Well, you know, you do get some of that, but I'm not sure if Fairy Tail is gonna do anything about it. But we'll see how they president president this way. And pretty much, the last warning is there are 12 more wizards. Um, and pretty much, don't fight if you if you don't fight some battle, you cannot win. And then she goes back to her ship, and you know they they they're gonna. They know about pretty much. They already know about fairy tale going to their kingdom, and of course they had to still go there just for to find Makarov to save them. And that was it. That was pretty much of the chapter. It was decent though because I did like the whole showcase of the power and how um, you know how how was handled her character stuff like that. 
interesting though but you know through a fairy tale it's hard to trust this case because it's the fact that it could just um easily be dealt with i really hope it could be spread out longer i mean i don't want to be a the thing is this this the fact that these guys have a hard time with one character and that was not even a, one of those those um those high elite uh, wizards that she she brought up so you know they they, they i just can't I just can't. Um, I just cannot uh, see myself seeing them doing one on one and just easily beat them. Even after this moment, unless there's some hyperbolic time chamber just pop out of nowhere within this series be, be, uh, before they get to fight all of them, it would be mind boggling. I mean, I know Fairy Tale does this, but you know, with Tartarus Arc, some some of the traits were actually um, changed up and actually was actually a little bit I wouldn't say unique, but more like refreshing for this fairy tale series itself. They've done something a little bit different, you know, there's more t- tag team rather than like oh one on one because this person could really just out of nowhere ass pull it. Granted Urza did that, but that's not the point. Point is because, you know, we all used to that. But point is this is a, a big deal and I do hope the fairy tale doesn't really have to take care of all by themselves against these 12 um, wizards as as well as the entire guild himself. I'm still hoping that there will be more to it and I'm just hoping that fairy tale is the only is are there to make to ignite the fire of a war coming from the con- with, between two continents. So I'm only hoping for that. Um I can't get my hope up yet, but it, it so far it's, so far is going okay. It's going well actually going well um could have done without the fan service and stuff like that but we'll see what happens in the next chapter either more fan service or just probably less a very solid chapter of nanasu no tenzai and it's so great to see more in-depth look of Melida's character, especially where it is the case of the flashback where his life pretty much changed, or rather his um, his thoughts of process changed for the for the worse. But at least now he's able to overcome that. The the what surprised me is the was the actual mission behind this training. It's not rather to face the face the past and pretty much accept the past by overcoming your anger or emotions or the fact that sh- that person that you love the most is gone but the real mission behind it is actually kill the emotion of the character basically Milidus is rather strange and kind of um, dark <laughs> it's because killing emotions I mean granted it does help because you know the demon power the fact that anger uh, erupt the demon power it is based on motion, but still, the fact that you have to kill your own emotion just to do that is actually a rather uh, scary t- way to handle the things. And you know, you're pretty much asking for Melodus to become a side, uh, side uh, robot or uh, just a motionless guy. Or I, yes, it is it is the best way to do it because you know, even though in this chapter he overcome the past, he overcome the training, but. Who's to say that anger is going to come back, you know, is going to return once again? Because the fact that, you know, he still kept the emotion, still kept everything about it. But, you know, Frederick is still around. I don't think he knows. Does he? I'm trying to remember. I don't think he knows. But if he shows up, Frederick is going to make him get angry because this is the this is the same demon that killed, you know, that, that killed his, his loved one, his, uh, Liz. And... You know, this chapter is pretty much self-explanatory throughout the whole thing, except for the end part. Well, you know, they all exp- self-explanatory, but it's one of those chapters you just have to see yourself. It's really nicely done. I really like the whole Melodis monologuing the entire flashback and, t- and narrate w- w- what he feels about this whole going through this whole memory lane with Liz and Danafor, or just Liz in general. The fact that he 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 could relive this moment and you know still love her to that day, but the fact is she does 
die in the end of that memory where you know she dies and she can't come back because you know that's just the way it is and Melodis just can't accept that because you know it makes it it makes him upset and it makes him rage but yeah it's really it's really um you know the whole the whole chapter was just based on him monologuing about his his life and Liz you know how much he he treasured this memory how much he tr- he, he loved her and the more they keep going back to the memory, the more they keep looping, the more they just keep falling in love with her over and over again. But the fact is, this is just a memory, and she is gone, and there's nothing he can do. There's nothing else he can do. That's just the way it is. Um, this is really, it's a really, really nicely said from him. And you know, granted, this is one of those um. It's one of those things you always get from a lot of sh- series, you know, with the whole never again, I will ha- won't let this again, you know, I won't let this happen again, this whole not letting your friends, your family, your loved one die again, you know, don't repeat that same mistake. It's, you always get that from a lot of series. That's normal. That's pretty much something you always hear, from, from, you always read from a lot of series. However, in this case, I thought it was nicely done because... Not only that, um, the yeah, you actually not only that we get a more in depth of his character or seeing how he has to deal with the situation, but the fact that his character has, has from the beginning has always been um something that's just holding back on the day where Liz died, and you know where he doesn't really accept that moment. And it, usually, a lot of different series is when they say like you know never again, they would just say it because we actually see it. We actually see it as the story progress in the present time. Miller does that situation happened in the past, and he been holding up. It's, it was not based on the experience from the our uh, from us reading or watching. Depends watching him, you know, uh, as he progress and then see him a uh, failing mission or uh, the day where he forgot where he for where he failed to protect. That was in the past. That's the character that was actually hiding behind him. And we don't know what's, what was that about. You know, we have hints here and there. Uh, yes, we already know that Liz died. But, you know, what does Miladis feel about that? And they always brought it up that that moment was the day that Miladis just lost it and just went berserk. As to the point that he destroyed the entire country. So, we got to see the entire visual in a flashback way, or well, not only just flashback, but the fact it's part of a training where he has to literally revisit those memories over and over again. So, you know, this was a nicely tie in of that using of never again, never do the same mistake. It's, just, it's, it's a really nice idea to how they do this kind of way. Nice demonstration of seeing how Melody's progress himself in emotions and his development. So now he finally conquered that. Again, anger could come back. So it would be a scary thought to see what will happen when he meets Fredrin once more. But at least now he managed to control that and accept that past. Hopefully he will start seeing things more better and start seeing like, you know, a lot of things. A lot of things of in the present rather than being held back by the past. Especially for like Elizabeth. Even though, you know, I, I, you get the idea that Melinda does, does see Elizabeth the way as, uh, as, her, as her own person. Though there was hints that he that 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 he's probably seeing Elizabeth the same as Liz, pretty much making it look like a replacement. But the the fact they acknowledge that way is a good thing, and hopefully they probably acknowledge like you know he's not she, he's not trying to replace Liz with Elizabeth, rather just starting over. It would have been better that way. Hopefully they would address that that style. Otherwise, it will be a little bit confusing for a lot of readers to think he's just using her. But let's not try and jump to the conclusion. Anyway, he's done with the training. Again, it was nice to see everything set pieces. It was nice to see the bond between him and Liz, how much they really um, loved each other. And it was sad to see how he has to accept that, but it's just the way it is. So basically, that was the entire, that was like mostly the chap. that was mostly on that case. Though we do get to see where King and others are about to go now, and that's where they're gonna do the train of the training inside that cave, but not without one special guest to come back, and that is Henderson. So yeah, he's back. 
King got pissed off, of course, because, you know, Henderson, we just come back from seeing him look like a villain. So Henderson collapsed, and then we see the other three guys, and the other three guys got it much worse. Though I kind of find it funny, the imagery, mainly the first and the last one, and that's because we get to see these three, these three Holy Knights that are Hauser, Guilt Thunder, and Grimmore. Hauser, he looks like he's like he went through so much hell. He's like, eh. and Guilt Thunder, because he gotta be a pretty boy, so he just looks like, oh, I'm knocked out. And Grimmore, you know, he's just a goof type, so why not? He just looks like he's dead tired, all beat up. <laughs> so, yeah, it kind of have a funny imagery for the last page. But other than that, um, yeah, it seems like the training is some hellish, hellish things to do. But it's good to know that these guys are there with King and the others. So at least they're all in one place. Um, I hope they don't really erase that grudge between Henderson and King and the others because, you know, they really can't say what it was. They can't really just let that go right away, at least for the time being. I'm not sure because it would be too simple just to say, oh, he was controlled. He was done. Okay, cool. I don't want that. There has to be a little bit more to it. And maybe a little explanation. I, we don't need to see on screen for explanation, but just have the on screen reaction after the expe- explanation, because you don't really have to do it twice. I mean, if you if you want to, be my guest, but you know, it's best to know the reaction and what's the what's their in the mind with that whole with, with the entire situation. That you know, the fact that Henderson has been controlled under the uh, under Frederick for a long time, so. But yeah, that was the end of the chapter. Again, the chapter was mainly focused on Mud, this um, f- struggles of, of something that passed, of Liz being killed, and there's nothing much he can do, or nothing, nothing he can do at all. But just moving on and act- and never repeat that mistake again, and never, and you know, pretty much like a, 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 another way of protecting loved one in the present. Just let the go of the past, and you know, just don't make any mistake. Learn from it. So it was a solid chapter. Like I said, you should, yeah, you, you got to see it yourself. Uh, I really cannot explain that much of myself. Um, this whole thing. What I'm saying, it sounds very basic, but this is the way how it's been illustrated, the monologuing, everything about it from Melodus. It really makes a really, really um, a uh, good chapter, a really solid one to feel, feel, feel the the emotion of Melodus and how much he has to, how much he has to, you know, remember the the suffering and how much he has to. You know how 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 close he was with Liz. Like it feels irreplaceable, but you know things has to move on. So yeah, you definitely gotta check that chapter out to see how it goes down. And like I said, it has that same old thing of like never make a mistake, or don't do it again, and stuff like that. But it's the way how it's handled. It. I thought it was neatly done. So I gotta give it credits to what it's due. Yeah. As the series continue to build the current arc, we get some interesting and eventful moments as well as more characterization from Kanae with the entire situation with the Skiyama family as well as a very interesting cliffhanger ending note that may have leave may lead to something very exciting for the next chapter. It's maybe not in terms of action but in terms of development it could be really important development for Sasaki and it could lead to anything as none of us are really so sure what is this person a good guy or a bad guy more com- more leaning to the bad guy because of the way how he is presented since the ending of the last series but we'll find out soon enough but to me I'm still don't trust the guy and I'm just gonna go with that Needless to say, this chapter was pretty good in terms of building up more and more excitement for the for this current arc, as well as maybe perhaps the future development for Sasaki. So we go back with this whole Tsukiyama family with Kanae st- wondering the words about what Horochi 
tell her tell him about abandoning the family in order to save the family because he is part of the wolves you know the rose thing since the whole ccg are now going to investigate this whole incidence of rose and because of him having a connection with that whole thing it could lead to Sukuyama family Sukuyama family in order to you know uh expose that they are in fact a ghoul family and if they're exposed to be a ghoul family then every and then the entire ccg are going to raid them and pretty much wipe them out for good which could be a terrible news for you know for fans of Shu, mainly for Shu. But still, in t- in terms of the story, it is terrible for Kanai because he is without a family. He lost his family, and he was taken in by Shu, um, taken by the Sukiyama family, and you know the father Miyamo. You know, at first he didn't like the guy because you know who would have liked the guy from the beginning? He is like a total. He was supposed to be a, a you know a total stranger. It's pretty understandable and pretty much um, you know it's pretty much a. Of course, a realistic route to take in the begin with, but he did look. But Mirmo did look after him, so therefore he feel like he total in depth of him, which makes sense because you know, of course, you gotta pay the back the favor. I mean, you know, a lot of people likes to do that. A lot of young age who've been dealing with, um, not dealing with, but more like being raised by someone that could you can really trust so sometimes you like to return that favor that's pretty much normal for everybody's standards um you, we go back to the flashback and see more of a kanai and his um conflicting issues with um master shu or you know sukiyama shu the thing the thing is it seems like he wants to be the only guy to be um to be the one he seems like the only guy that wants to be loyal to by Shu because you know he sees him as a brother even though he has this obsession that seems very um I guess you could say unhealthy but in this case you know that's how his that's how he works he, he Shu is a lifesaver for him he he really did um you know brought him to his brought to the family and you know it's, it's, it's I guess you could say it's pretty sad to see that he as a kid he he was he was raised he was raised by the family and. So pretty much, you know, you know, they are like brother, more or less. But to his to his dismay, he sees Shu back in the flashback, of course, see Shu with Horochi, which they pretty much have a good bond between each other. You, you have to read a novel. I forgot which novel it is. Uh, I wish I could read it. I wish it was all translated. Supposedly, you get the backstory of how uh, Sukiyama and Chi meet each other from the, for the first time and how they build up their bond i guess from there yes she is a human being and he she he is a ghoul so you know i'm actually interested to see the backstory of it but luckily for the people who has not read a novel they are um they are more or less exploiting that bond in, in, in this kind of sense so that way not a lot of people will get the misunderstanding or a lot of people being left behind i i guess you could say the novel will give you the in-depth look the, the 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 manga version if we get more detail it will be more of a more of a um like a summarization of these two of how they bond each other so in this case you see the bond of them and you can see how or you can see why they are like you know friends and why they connect in, in such way and to use that kind of story you we we have Kanai pretty much being hateful for the fact that he sees him dealing um bonding with uh with another person that's not him no and not only that but a human being no less so it just makes it harder for him to deal with that situation and deal with that whole conflicting emotion he he been having for this past entire season uh series so far so yeah you could say he is a very um very um explosive when it comes to emotions and he's just pretty so, um, I can't say he's hard to read, but he's just really, um, I guess you could just say he's just emotionally, I can't find the right word, but you know, he, he's, he's pretty, um, heavy on those. So, but going back to the present, we see, we see Shu, uh, Skiyama, you know, Shu, I'm just going to call him Shu for now because this is about the family. So maybe if the whole family gets wiped out, it would be much easier. I don't want that. I really don't want that, but I'm just saying, but anyway, let's go Shu. So Shu, unfortunately, he's going out of control because his because his Kagane is, is is about to go to the Kagaja, 
form. And, you know, of course, he has to resist that, the whole thing, the whole Skiyama family bloodline stuff, the whole explanation from the past, you know, the whole not going for Kagusha. But for him, he is that near. So, yeah, it, it gets more worse and worse. So, to the point that he might as well to get given in and just you go Kagusha instead of just losing out of the mind. But they're not going to do that until otherwise. So, Kanai went back there and pretty much take try to take care of uh, Shu from using, you know, from using Kagane and probably destroying the entire mansion itself. But, yeah, as you can see, Shu is just really, really awful. I mean, good God, he looks terrible. He, it, this is uh, pretty much an incredibly deep depression look of shoe and you know the way how the the way how it's drawn of him you could really tell this this guy is just looks he looks terrible he really looks terrible um and, you know it's not just because of the face but it's just you could tell the entire body the hand it, the art the art of describing describe um pretty much illustrates showing him even though he has a robe but you could still tell how much low how much how sad he has become look you see his arm his hand his hand looks like a very dried up old man that has no food for the past two for the past year and you know barely surviving by water or something so that's what she was looking like and it's like look a really poor old fella that you just you just you kind of don't want to look at it but you you want to help at it but for some reason that person just don't want to get that help whatever the case whatever the case may be so you know it just looks awful they all trying to calm him down and they managed to do that and again there's more shots that you could tell shoes just looks really awful and you know i guess you could say the uh, the use of the technique of a panel with him only his eye rather than showing the entire face in that one panel where he was asking why everybody is here to Kanai. And you can see just the eye rather than seeing the entire figure of his face. Pretty much giving you the idea that his face is just too much but his eyes is still alive. And you know he really thanks everybody in there to actually support him. And then you see his face once again but he just looks. You, he just almost looks dead. The whole shadowy. The shadow lighting right in his cheeks, you could tell he's just like so dried up, so, so need of food. And he really just let himself, let him, it's like, it's like a diet gone horribly wrong. The person never gets star, uh, never get fed, starvation. It, it just looks awful. And Kadai just cannot take it to see his face. And, you know, it is, it was, it is pretty sad. How Shu was go go his way to tell him like you know the family, the family is is, is in his hand now to Kanai. But you know, can, uh, Shu is not dead, and Shu should be like be um running the family or uh, at least Miramo. But the point is, it's like he's just so out of it. It's like he just want to die or something, and you know Kanai just have that horrible conflicting. F- emotion to in, in his in his um in his mind just hitting that tree tree and he blames and hates the f- people that he named T Hori, Ken Kaneki and Hase Sasaki which um I don't I don't even know where this is going to go next it's possible that he could end up being the one to die in this series it's possible he could end up dying I don't think he's made to um I, I, to me, it feel like it reminds me of that guy from I don't remember the names anymore, but it reminds me of the guy from um, Kogi S, the, where that guy who's supposed to be like a brother to Liluj, and it's not that he has an emotional conflict, but he's like so loyal to him that he would do anything because of the the stature of a bro- of being a brother or being a call a brother. It's like kind of like that. I feel like Kanai Kanai might do a sacrifice in order for Shu to live on, even though you know he's younger than him. But that's just not how. Oh, 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 that's not how everything works like that. It's just that's just life. It is. Now the the only the the actual interesting part, the minus the very ending, was the whole you know the whole Rose uh, operation going in ta- and going in effect with. With these, with these CCG investigator, with that, um, with that creepy dude of, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to remember the name. Oh, I remember. 
Kijima, yeah, they he's doing the operation. He's doing this whole case, and Furuta was made for a decoy apparently. And they draw uh, Masuma, Masuma and the, and the other two guards in order to um you know they 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 needed of course they're doing this whole Rose case, so they they're pretty much connected to this thing too as well. So uh, it was kind of funny to see uh K- 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 Kijima Kijima. You know, like, oh, all right, you're a good decoy after all. But that whole damn bosses, was that for me? <laughs> it's like, uh, no, 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 it's not. It's like, that's one way to, I guess that's one way to take your hate on him or something. But I still cannot believe that's really him from the first season, from the first series, that is. That whole where Toka mistaken to be, uh, mistaken that person to be Kaneki. I still cannot believe that's really him. Everything about it, even that shot they did. The whole um, turnaround shot, like <laughs> is the exact same, is the exact same look. <laughs> it's just, it's like, it's like, um, it's like the series is mock. It's like Ishida is just mocking us now. <laughs> it's like, hey, look, it's the exact same panel. You know what that means? That is him. Anyway, you know they they got close, but for uh, but Masuma Masuma, she you know she has that cognate that could make a giant wall and pretty much can pretty much nobody cannot go through because it's just penetrable that is until Haru, who is a a newly introduced character from the last chapter and yeah she's no joke i i fear for this girl i fear this girl i again more more strong women strong women more please you know with this case, yeah, you remember she she is from um, Arima Squad, the Squad Zero. So her wearing that, yeah, makes it very intimidating. And the fact that she broke that wall easily, and now it, now it could be a huge problem for Masume, and that could actually ends up leading to Kanai, which could lead to Sukiyama family, which could lead to a very huge bad conflict. But yes, um, it is no joke, and it's already so far interesting to see how this is going to go down further down the line, especially from the last chapter, where she's interested to see uh, Sasaki, which it is possible that, some, that someone has suggested that Anima probably sent her there in order to look after Sasaki, because, you know, Anima got this uh, bad feeling from the last arc that Sasaki was going back to Kaneki, especially how you saying like don't kill um he um don't kill um Hinami and you know he changed it up the tune by saying I, I got I want to I want to adopt her and stuff like that instead of like the don't don't kill her she's my family or friend because if they if he were to say that yeah that would have been bad news but I think that is the case. Now, the last part is the where the real interesting comes in. Not to say that everything else was not interesting because they were all good on their own. You know, conflicting issues, feelings, the the deep depressions, the sadness of seeing the one of the one of the favorite characters for the for a lot of fans and one of the characters that I actually endured a lot. Seeing him in the horrible states is just conf- it just it, it makes me upset to be honest with you. But None, none, nonetheless, the last part is where the where it raised a lot of questions, and where it's gonna head to is gonna be very interesting. And that's where Sasaki just ends up meeting Uta. Yes, the guy that we don't even know if he's truly bad or truly good. I'm still holding on the line that he's truly bad. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm only saying truly good part only because of that chapter where he come back to re. Well, and, you know, pretty much have the discussion for Yomo, with Yomo for a brief while about this whole, what the parents want, what did they, what the boss wants from Kaneki and stuff like that. And, you know, he acts like, well, I don't really know. I can't understand them either. You know, stuff like that. It's like, is he, is he really on the spy for the, for these guys? Or he's really messing around with their mind and not letting them know that he's really, you know, a Perry leader. It's interesting and this one is going to be very interesting as well to see where this is going to end up going with this whole conversation between Sasaki and Uta going to go lead to so yes that was the end of the chapter pretty good for a build up and it's definitely just keep getting more and more interesting and now the next chapter is going to be very interesting with Sasaki why he went there who knows why what he's going to well I know I know he knows the the 
the this the the location thanks to the the whole present he received from the mat the mass present and the whole you know the whole detail on the store name so that's where he got the information from but what does he want is it's only a matter of time of next week so get ready for that so that's gonna do it for today's episode hope you guys enjoy it there will be a friday's episode don't worry about that i have found a new strategy on how to handle the scheduling just not this one because I kind of slacked off because I was so tired because I actually woke up in one morning just to so just to watch a pay per view that was taking place in Japan. Yeah, <laughs> I was stubborn like that. So anyway, uh, yeah, D Grayman is coming back. Die Grayman is coming back. Whatever you like to say, it, anything man is coming back. I'm really happy to see that. Um, I haven't seen Dragon Ball Super yet. I'm going to see it when I have the time. Right now, I'm actually catching up with one other series. Um, yeah, I'm still reading the manga, the one, the continuing series that's going on. Still writing them, my thoughts on Tumblr. And maybe, just maybe, I'll probably write something special concerning my history with Die Greymon. Yeah, I keep changing. I'm, I'll find out soon. Anyway, I, I, I'll probably end up writing in that post maybe this Saturday because you know, I'm really excited. I, I don't know about it. It was one of my first early reviews, and I actually still have it. It was <laughs> it was kind of a first draft. I guess, you know, I, I was not... I was still new at that time. But I feel like I should bring it back up, and I feel like maybe I should just post that because I still have to do that job, the whole reviewing animes and manga series. I'm still doing that, but that will come. So, again, if you haven't subscribed already, do subscribe to this channel. Spread the words to everyone else and, you know, share 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 my channels and see what they like or, you know, what they see, what whatever they like to hear, my reviews, my thoughts, or whatever. Whatever comes to my mind. And, yeah, that's a, that would do it for today's episode, and I'll see you on Friday. Take care, everyone.